Today's All Indiana Artist is a passionate hip hop artist and a poet whose work revolves all around his upbringing. You know, many of his songs are actually inspired by his relationship with his father. Please help me and welcome Rhetoric. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Swagged out. I just told him <laughs> I really like his t-shirt. You I know, tell it. me, man, okay, so you're an artist mm -hmm. and you're very sensitive about your stuff, yep. okay? Uh, tell me how poetry has really kind of guided your, your work as a musician. Um, poetry is, um, that's where I got my start into, like, any type of music, and it's, um, I started writing it for personal reasons, just kind of as an outlet. I was very introverted, and um, I didn't talk to a lot of people, especially not about my feelings, so I could get them out on paper, and it was just really therapeutic for me. Um, and when I started performing my poetry freshman year of college, it got me more comfortable to then start performing my music and then begin mm. that journey. So. You know, spoken word, things like that, some folks have never really experienced it before. It's all about storytelling mm -hmm. um, and some of your work that I've been able to see and hear. Right. You talked a lot about your relationship with your dad, things like that. Talk yeah. to me a little bit about why your personal life experiences really drive your work. Um, I, I think it is because I have that, that uh, foundation within poetry. Um, when I first started making music, I kind of kept the poetry and the music a little separate, and I was trying to maybe find a style for my music. Um, and I kind of came to realize that um, it's, it's more therapeutic for me to combine them both mm. and um, get the things out that I'm feeling through my music as well, because people really relate. Um, to a lot of the stuff that I go through, you know, issues with your father, um, you know, being around drug abuse, and um, it's it's one of the reasons why I do music and why I write poetry is because it does relate to a lot of people, mm -hmm. and it can help them in the same way that music helped me when I was growing up and didn't really have anybody to talk to about it. I would listen to songs and hear these things that the artists were going through that I was going through, and it it felt really good to know that you know other people were going through it and they had made a way, and mm -hmm. you know. Isn't it amazing that we can communicate with each other like that, yeah. especially in, in sensitive situations? Age 11, you started <laughs> writing at age 11? Age 11, yeah. Um, it was, I'm not really sure what drove me to do it. Um, I think, you know, I just started writing in a notepad one day and... Um, it just kind of came it, about. It, it felt good, yeah, to, huh. to be able to get my thoughts out in that way. I have a brother who's about a year and a half older than me, but we okay. weren't, like, close at that age. Mm -hmm. um, so I didn't talk to him about a lot of this stuff, and it just, you know, it felt right, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, fun fact before you get to perform for us. Right. You're related to Little Richard. Tell me how this goes <laughs> down real quick. Um, so I actually, I never got a chance to meet him, but uh, my dad told me from a young age, my grandmother was his first cousin. Ah. Um, so uh, my, my dad's family, they're all from Georgia. And um, I, once he told me that, it was, I think that was one of the things that kind of sparked uh, my interest in music as well. Okay. Um, I watched Little Richard's biopic. I started getting into his music a little more. What and, a life. Yeah. yeah <laughs> an amazing what life. What a life. Uh, very eccentric artist and very just lively. His performances were always amazing to me. So. Um, that was something that was really cool that I thought, you know, um, it, it made me feel like music was in mm. my genes and in my family. And uh, it came really naturally once I started making music. So it just kind of felt right. Well, I think that it's a good time to for us all to be able to experience some of that magic. Of course, people can find your stuff on uh, Apple and Spotify. Apple Music, Spotify, any streaming platform that you have, you can find it. And you're actually going to be uh, performing a spoken word piece for us. What's it titled? Um, it's titled Vision Quest. Um, and actually, I wrote this piece back in uh, the end of 2014. But mm. it's still, to this day, is one of my favorite pieces. So. Well, you know what? From the album perspective, this is rhetoric. Yep. I took a right at life and a left at death. I moved along the physical roads towards metaphorical misfortune and the ordinance led to a forbidden forest. More than equipped to deal with such a situation, I slow up my pace and as I take in my surroundings, I'm pounded by a sea of allergies. I swallowed the pollen of souls forgotten, digested the pride, the silent cries of the meek. I tripped over the tree trunks of assumption, dozens upon dozens claiming to know my function. 
I was stuck at the intersection of longitudes and latitudes unknown, trapped in a Bermuda Triangle of isolation and devastation. I looked behind the bushes of crooks, caught foul looks, sold and ate the cushion, almost got booked. Yeah, I learned things the hard way. But in a zone far away, it's hard to say who was there to teach. And as I swam past the swamp of leeches, a subtle sound interrupted my sequence. As if to whisper, a voice beseeched the help of a scholar and a gentleman. Well, at least that's what she called me. We talked for days, contemplating creation, weighed against Darwin's statements, and as she grew weary, I carried her aimlessly through the abyss. Just when there seemed to be no hope in sight, I saw a glimpse of light. A mere flicker as the wick of a candle. I looked down to ask the woman if she too had seen the light, only to find she had disappeared from sight. My hands like ice with luminescent glow. Was this all a show? Was I in a dream, unbeknownst? No. Suddenly I began to realize it was a test. This woman had taught me so much, then just up and left. Therefore, I found my strength inside myself. I carried my burdens, making up for my misdeeds. I was lost in a whirlwind of envy that stemmed from need. I learned through nature, the mother of all life. Her beautiful creations gave me a humble sense of peace. I fell to my knees to thank the Lord for my grief, for had I not suffered, I would not know how truly lucky I was. Sometimes we must be dragged through the mud to recognize true love. Pain is the most important part as we embark on our separate journeys. This sensation, however discomforting it may be, is the blood on the leaves that teaches us not to stray from our dreams, the bittersweet flavors of nature that save us from our past. So if I'm to be classified by my environment, I guess I'm an outsider then, a lone wolf adapting to different habitats. And as I stagger back to reality, I see the doubt in me, the different fallacies I came to believe is resolute. But as I toke the trees of truth, the forest fire sent smoke signals to change my views.